In this video, I'm going to discuss an important type of control chart called an acceptance control chart. Unlike traditional control charts, acceptance control charts are, the, are designed to tell you whether or not you're producing an acceptable product. Now, a traditional control chart is used to determine whether a process is stable over time, whether it's operating at a constant mean and a constant standard deviation. Now, you can have a process, incidentally, that's in a state of st statistical control, but producing a lot of product that's unacceptable beyond the specification limits. If you look at X charts and X bar charts, for example, they position their control limits with respect to the process mean, typically at plus or minus three sigma around the process mean. And they generate an alert if a point on the chart goes beyond those three sigma control limits. An acceptance control chart is different. It's used to tell you whether or not you're producing an acceptable product. And it does that by positioning its control limits, not with respect to the process mean, but with respect to the specification limits. So assuming you have an upper and lower specification limit, the control limits are going to be placed somewhat inside of the specification limits. And you're going to get an alert only if a point comes too close to the specification limits. Now where this really becomes useful is if you have what I like to call a high CPK process. That's a process that has a standard deviation that's quite small with respect to the allowable tolerances. With such a process, you can allow that mean to vary in the short term somewhat from its long-term value without causing significant problems, without putting product outside of the specification limits. To illustrate the concept, I've created a standard control chart here, a standard X chart, where I've taken 100 measurements of the strength of 100 items sampled from a production process and plotted it on a traditional control chart. Now on this chart, the center line is at the mean of those 100 items, the mean strength, and the control limits are drawn at plus and minus 3 sigma. Now the specification on strength is actually 200 to 300. That's how I've scaled the vertical axis to cover the entire width of the specification limits. And you can see that the process doesn't use a great amount of the tolerance here. In fact, if you computed CPK, it turns out the CPK in this case is 3.28. Now, if you're producing this sort of a product, you really don't have to control it as tightly as this control chart might suggest. In fact, you may be able to save some money if you don't control it that tightly, if you allow it to vary somewhat uh, around its center line. Let the mean drift maybe above and below its long-term value, as long as it doesn't drift too close to those specification limits. That's what the acceptance control chart is going to do. It's going to allow the mean to drift and only alert you if you get too close to the specs. To create an acceptance control chart, I'm going to go up to the top menu to the section labeled SPC. You'll see the menu item for control charts. and In this case, I want a special purpose control chart the acceptance individuals chart. Now there, there are two selections on the menu, an acceptance chart for data that comes in groups, maybe you know five every hour, that sort of thing, and an acceptance individuals chart for data like mine where observations are taken one at a time. When I select that menu item, a data input dialog box will come up. I'll tell it that my observations are in a column labeled strength and that I have identifiers in a column labeled time. The lower specification limit for strength is 200. The 
the nominal or target value is 250 and the upper specification limit is 300. Now, I don't need both the lower and an upper spec. I need at least one of those. Uh, in this case, I have both an upper and a lower spec. When I press OK, it'll take me to the Analysis Options dialog box. Now, there are two important settings that I need to worry about here. First off, there's a setting labeled Type of Study. It wants to know whether this is an initial study or what some folks call a Phase 1 study, in which case Sigma, the standard deviation of the process, will be estimated from the data that I provide. If I set the type of study to control to standard or phase two, then I'll be asked to provide a value for sigma. In this case, I'll leave it an initial study and let the data suggest what sigma is. The other setting of importance is down where it says fraction non-conforming. It wants me to specify the maximum fraction of non-conforming items, items beyond the spec <clears throat> that I'm willing to tolerate. If you follow the Six Sigma philosophy, then typically the allowable fraction of non-conforming or defects per million, if you like, is 3.4 per million. So I've typed in here 0.00000034. What the process will do then is it will position its control limits far enough inside the spec to alert me to situations when the estimated fraction of non-conforming items becomes larger than 3.4 per million. At the same time, it will allow the mean to drift as long as the estimated fraction of items beyond the spec is less than this target. Make those changes and press OK. I'll then be able to specify and select different tables and graphs. I'll just take the defaults and that creates for me the acceptance charts. And you can see the limits on this acceptance chart are quite a bit wider than they were on the previous X chart. In summary then, what we've done is created a control chart that will basically let this process run. It will let it run. It will let the mean drift a little bit if it doesn't get too close to the spec. And it will only alert us if we get into a situation where it appears that we're going to be creating too much product outside the specification limits.